Ukraine's invisible armor, the Barracuda camouflage that broke the drones. If you've ever wondered what happens when you mix Swedish engineering with Harry Potter's invisibility cloak, well, you get Saab's Barracuda camouflage system. It doesn't make tanks disappear completely, but it sure makes Russian drone operators question their last eye exam. Hey friends, Wes here, multi-branch veteran, studying for the bar exam and defense writer. And the question is, why now? Well, the censor war over Ukraine has gone thermonuclear. Well, not literally thermonuclear, but every cheap quadcopter and $2,000 FPV is a flying sniper scope. Every tank, IFV, and artillery piece is a heat signature waiting to die. So armies around the world are doubling down on concealment. Not the old school kind with pine branches and dirt, but full spectrum invisibility suits. Denmark, for example, just announced it's fitting its new CV-90s with Saab's Barracuda multi-spectral camouflage. And that tells you everything about the trend. Even the most modern armies now assume they'll be fighting in a world where the enemy can see everything, everywhere, all at once. For Ukraine, this is old news. They've been living that reality since day one. The drone swarms above the front don't sleep, and that's why Saab's Barracuda, Sweden's you-can't-see-me fabric, is quietly becoming one of the most important technologies on the battlefield. Ukrainian CV-90 crews have already praised it, calling the camouflage a real edge against Russian drones. When the vehicle gets spotted from space one day and then vanishes in the next thermal pass, that's not luck. That's the Swedes doing what they do best, making practical, quiet excellence that drives Russian commanders insane. So let's break down the science behind this thing. Barracuda isn't just a net you throw over a tank and hope for the best. It's a multi-spectral signature management system, which is military jargon for making expensive hardware disappear from sensors. Saab designed it to confuse, distort, and absorb detection across four key spectrums, visual, near-infrared, thermal, and radar. In other words, it doesn't just hide a tank from the naked eye, it hides it from the eyes that really matter. Drones, thermal scopes, and radar-guided weapons. Visually, Barracuda's surface texture and color patterns disrupt outlines and reflections, breaking up the familiar geometry of a vehicle. A tank's biggest giveaway is its shape. The long gun barrel, the flat armor plates, and the sharp edges that scream, shoot me from the air. Barracuda replaces that with uneven contours and light diffusing material. To the human eye or the camera, it makes a tank look more like a pile of junk metal or a clump of brush than a multi-million dollar fighting vehicle. It's the military equivalent of putting on bad camouflage so good it fools the algorithm instead of the sniper. In the infrared spectrum, Barracuda is even more devious. The system manages heat emissions by using layers of thermal insulation and heat dissipating materials that prevent the vehicle's metal services from radiating the way they normally would. Engines, transmissions, and exhaust systems all produce hot spots that thermal cameras can detect from miles away. Barracuda masks those hot zones, spreading and cooling them until the vehicle's temperature profile blends with the background terrain. To a drone's FLIR camera, that 40-ton CV-90 might appear no warmer than a nearby hay bale. The crew stays alive because the enemy never saw them coming. Then there's radar, which Barracuda treats like an annoying relative who keeps calling. The material layers scatter and absorb radar waves rather than bouncing them straight back. That reduces the vehicle's radar cross-section, essentially how big it looks on a radar screen. Instead of a neat, bright signature that screens armored target, the reflected signal becomes fuzzy noise that blends in with the background clutter. To Russian surveillance radars, that's the difference between seeing a clear silhouette and seeing static. According to Saab's own technical documentation, Barracuda can cut a vehicle's infrared signature by more than 90% in certain configurations. That's an astonishing figure when you realize how reliant modern targeting systems are on infrared. A Russian drone operator looking through a thermal scope might see what appears to be a warm patch of grass or a bush instead of a fully crude armored vehicle. In a war where survival often depends on staying unseen for just a few more seconds, that's not an upgrade, it's life insurance. And make no mistake, this isn't about making tanks look prettier, it's about keeping them alive. The FPV drone to tank kill ratio keeps climbing, and the battlefield is now a constant duel between eyes in the sky and soldiers trying to blind them. Barracuda is Ukraine's answer to that duel, a quiet, passive defense that doesn't shoot back, but wins by making the other guy waste his shot. It's not flashy, and it doesn't explode, 
Oh, and it doesn't trend on social media, but in the new age of drone warfare, invisibility is the deadliest weapon of all. And here's the funny part. The better Barracuda works, the less we see of it. There's an OPSEC gap with this technology. If you're hoping for glossy, close-up battlefield photos of a Barracuda-wrapped CV-90 basking in the Ukrainian sun, you're out of luck. If it's doing its job, it won't stand out. So the absence of flashy new photos doesn't mean it's gone. It probably means it's working perfectly. In fact, the few images that do exist, like earlier ones showing Ukrainian CB-90s wrapped in Barracuda panels, line up perfectly with what Saab and the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense had both described. Crews called it invaluable, especially against Russian thermal scopes and FPV drones that rely on heat contrast to lock on. As one Ukrainian officer told Defense UA, quote, we noticed the difference immediately, end quote. When a crew that's been hunted daily by Orlans and Lancets tells you something helps them survive, that's all the confirmation you need. So yes, there's no breaking photo of a Barracuda today, but that's the point. The quietest tech is often the most effective. Now, for my eagle-eyed viewers who spend way too much time pausing drone footage at 4K resolution like I do, here's your Barracuda spotting guide. You're looking for a distinct 3D leaf texture. It looks like layered scales or folded fabric rather than flat paint. The finish is matte and non-reflective, breaking up light patterns even at weird angles. If you see a tank or an IFE that looks like it's been shrink-wrapped in dull foliage, that's your first clue. In infrared imagery, it'll often appear colder than the surrounding ground or structures, especially when idling. Go back to your old footage of Ukrainian CV-90s or even Leopard 2s on deployment. Some of those blurred, low-contrast silhouettes that look like sensor glitches? That's not a camera problem, that's Barracuda. If you think you spot one, send it my way so I can take a look at it too. So zooming out, the real story here isn't just camouflage, it's Sweden's growing role as Europe's silent arsenal. Between Barracuda camouflage, Saab's ASC-890 airborne radar, CV-90 infantry fighting vehicles, and in-law anti-tank weapons, Sweden has gone from neutral Nordic furniture supplier to one of Ukraine's most valuable partners. And it's not slowing down. The more Russia ramps up its drone and satellite reconnaissance, the more Europe will look to Sweden's defense industry for answers. Barracuda is just the beginning. Saab is already experimenting with adaptive camouflage, systems that actively adjust color and temperature to blend in with surroundings in real time essentially electronic chameleon skin. It's a fitting evolution in a war where sensors have replaced snipers and invisibility is the new armor. So what do we actually know right now? Well, first, Denmark's decision to outfit its brand new CV-90s with Saab's Barracuda system is a flashing neon sign that says, this technology isn't a niche experiment anymore. It's going mainstream across NATO. When a country like Denmark, which is investing in the most modern variant of the CV-90, commits to this kind of multi-spectral camouflage, it sends a clear message to allies and adversaries. Visibility kills. The Danes are effectively betting their armored fleet survivability on Saab's material science, which tells you just how seriously Western militaries are taking the sensor threat from drones, from satellites, and from loitering munitions. Then there's Ukraine's battlefield validation, which carries far more weight than any other marketing brochure ever could. The Ukrainians have used Barracuda in real combat under the relentless gaze of Russian drones, and it's earned its reputation the hard way. Crews have reported being harder to spot, thermal signatures being dulled, and enemy strikes missing entirely. That's the kind of testimonial no defense contractor can buy. The Ukrainians didn't have the luxury of a test range or simulated conditions. They used Barracuda while being hunted by Orlans, Lancets, and satellite-fed artillery, and it worked. If you want to know whether a product does what it says on the label, give it to a Ukrainian crew under fire. They'll tell you in five minutes flat. Finally, let's talk about the radio silence on the new photos or footage. A few armchair analysts take the lack of recent Barracuda sightings as proof that Ukraine isn't using it anymore. That's nonsense. This is one of those rare cases where not seeing something is evidence it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Barracuda's job is to make vehicles blend into their surroundings, to be unremarkable, unphotogenic, and effectively invisible to sensors that matter the most. The absence of new pictures doesn't mean it disappeared from the front. It means it disappeared on the front. If someone posts a crystal clear photo of a Barracuda-clad CV-90 parked in the open, I'd start to worry that the camouflage wasn't doing its job. Barracuda doesn't trend on TikTok. It doesn't light up Telegram with dramatic footage. 
And it doesn't come with a PR team. It's not flashy, but war isn't a fashion show. For crews who live and die based on whether an FPV drone sees them glowing on a thermal scope, the choice is simple. Ask any Ukrainian crew under drone fire whether they prefer a glossy digital camo paint job or a Swedish invisibility cloak. And they'll laugh before giving you the obvious answer. They'll take the cloak every single time. Because in a battlefield ruled by censors, the side that can't be seen is the side that lives to fight tomorrow. And right now, Sweden's Barracuda is helping Ukraine do exactly that. Quietly, effectively, and without ever needing a selfie. Barracuda's story isn't over. It's evolving. And somewhere on a Ukrainian field right now, there's a CV-90 parked in plain sight that nobody can see. That's it for today, my friends. I'm wondering if there's any appetite among my viewers for being able to support the channel directly through memberships. In exchange for a few quid a month, you get exclusive videos, some cool swag, and some other unique stuff. Just something I'm thinking about. I would rather have members of the channel rather than take brand deals to pay the bills around here. Anyways, until then, subscribing is the best free way to support these videos. And as always, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Crimea is Ukraine.